This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jail Ministry. This is Miss Millie again and we will continue to talk today about Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I'm so excited that you have decided to join me today. I pray that you have your Bibles with you and hopefully maybe a pen and some paper that you can write down the scriptures that you can go back and read the scriptures at your own time of convenience. And once again, like I said last time, we do think all of the listeners that join in with us and that are a part of the jail ministry. We thank each and every one of you. Uh, thank you, Heather, uh, for that encouraging letter. And we're, we are continually praying for you. Antonio, um, Leona, just to name a few people, uh, Christopher. We had so many more people write in. We're just so excited of how the jail ministry is helping you uh, even with making better decisions and helping you to understand just who Jesus is. You know, I would often tell the young kids that it's not altogether that you don't believe in Jesus. Maybe you just not have had a proper introduction to him as to who he really is. And that introduction is the beginning of your salvation. You know, Romans 10 and 9 tell us if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and that he paid the price for our sins and that if we say, Lord, forgive me, he forgives us. He gives us a clean state, slate. He hits the do-over button and we start our lives fresh and anew from that point on and we go on to know him. And I pray that each and every one of you have received him already. And as we continue on in the scriptures very shortly here, I pray that the love that you have for Jesus, that it will be strengthened and that you will learn who he is, that he's a God of love. But he did not come to make our lives difficult. He did not come to destroy us in any kind of way whatsoever. But he came to seek and to save that which is lost. And sometimes people are lost. They may not altogether know that they are. Maybe they say, I just can't figure it out. Well, maybe you lost in a decision, how to make the right decision. But nevertheless, Jesus Christ, he loves us. We are his creation. And there's nothing that we can do to stop him from loving us. But do know he do not like our sin. He don't like our wrongdoing. He don't like our iniquity our unfair treatment, when we're unjust, when we act immoral. He don't like that. You shouldn't like it either, but he do love us. And I thank him for that. And I pray that his word find a home in your heart today. We're going to be talking about the mind of Christ. Now, as I was talking to the Lord about what would he have me to talk to his people about, you know, the Bible say that we're the sheep of his pasture, that our souls, which we do have a living soul on the inside of us. We're not just a body, but we have a soul inside of us when God himself created Adam and breathed into Adam's nostrils and Adam became a living soul. And then later on, we read in Genesis how he took the dust of the earth and created Adam. So being that living soul, we are descendants of Adam. So inside this body, we know that eventually this body is going to go back to the dust from which it cometh. But while we are here, we want God himself. God is a spirit and we want that spirit to inhabit our souls, to come in our life and not just feel him on the outside, which is wonderful, but allow that outside feeling to go on the inside and let him take his abode in your soul 
And as you live each day with Jesus Christ living inside your soul, and then when that appointment that mankind as a whole have with the Lord Jesus Christ, when we stand before him, he will look at us and see himself in us, and he will welcome us into heaven and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that is what we want because we know that in this life that we live as beautiful and wonderful as it is, one day we're going to give this world a permanent way goodbye. But until that time, right now is where we live in the very present, in real time. So I want to talk to you about the mind of Christ. So for those that have their Bible, turn to Philippians, the second chapter. Write it down in case you need to go back. And with us short amount of time that we have it would be wonderful we could read the whole chapters but we cannot so i encourage you go back and read the whole chapter that way you can keep it in perfect content as the bible wanted it to be but philippians 4 a second chapter and the fifth verse tells us say let this mind this mind what mind the mind that's in us let this mind of Christ be also in us. So let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's what it says. And the Lord spoke to me as I was talking to him. He said that my people, they don't altogether believe that I can do what they're asking me to do. Because somewhere along the way, there's a serious disconnect between their minds and the belief that's in their heart. See, the Bible said that it, Every man was given the measure of faith. That's a standard measure. The measure of faith that we was given and is enough faith to get us saved. And it is enough faith to believe that God can do whatever we need him to do in our life and according to his will. Now, he's not going to do anything amiss that we would heap it upon the lust of our flesh. And when the Bible say that the lust of the flesh, our body wants to do all kind of things, a lot of things ungodly. And the lust of the eyes, we see too much. Uh, we, we want this car. We want a Maserati. We want to do this. We want that. But what are you gonna? Are you gonna fill that Maserati full of people and drive them to church, or are you gonna drive it where you want to drive it? So consider all of that too. And then the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. See, the, the Lord want His people. He don't want us to be a proud a people of pride and not that you're you don't have confidence in yourself and confidence in what you do and that you are proud of your accomplishments but the type pride that make your nose want to scrape the sky that type pride the pride where you escalate your own self and you create your own pedestal and you climb up on it and you pump your chest and you say i am somebody but we are somebody as long as we're in jesus christ but in ourselves we're nothing we cannot do anything without the lord jesus christ so I encourage you, as we go along, think about the things in your mind. Think about your, your very mind. We change our mind about, what, 50, 11 times a day, if there's such a number. We change our times more often than not. So the Lord does not want to reside in our mind. He wants to reside in our heart. And we know in our mind, the, even our conscious mind. And sometimes we... We tell ourselves, I, I do believe that God can do it, but there's still some doubt there. There was a man in the Bible, he said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. See, if there's a little bit of unbelief there, it would stop the Lord from getting to you and, and getting what you need. So we go to the Lord and we say, Lord, help thou my unbelief and find out where the unbelief is. What is causing us not to believe that God is who he say he is? And the scripture tell us when we come to the Lord, we must believe. And that believing is not just with our mind, it's in our hearts. We believe that he is who he say he is and that he will do what he say he will do. And you, just the very word uh, integrity. God is a man of integrity. He will do what he said that he will do. How he said he's going to do it, that's up to him. That's not so much our lane, but he will do it when he wants to do it. And again, not our lane. Our lane is to believe that he can do what we're asking him to do and we get an expectancy that he will do it when he do it. He may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. 
And he may not come when you want him, but you will want him when he come. We need him to come in our lives and make the difference because the Bible tell us that don't be conformed to this world. There's so much going on out there in the world. The world say pink hair is cool. We get pink hair. Now, green hair is cool. We get green hair. But what's wrong with your God giving hair? And the Lord loves us so much. He's so intricate in his details. He's so specific that he named every hair on our head because we're just that important to him. He's a God of detail and he's such a gentleman. He's not going to walk up in our lives and take over. We got to open the door and say, come in, Lord Jesus, because I need you right now. And the Bible tells us that we're not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I'll tell you that the de our mind is like a battlefield sometimes, isn't it? You can have a war going on with your, in your mind with the person sitting next to you, and they don't know nothing about it. Look how they're looking at me. They're not looking at you. I bet they talking about me. You see a group of people whispering and automatically something in your mind saying they talking about you. But what if they're not talking about you? And what if they are? What is it to you? See, the most important thing is not what people say about us. It's what God knows about us. That's so very important. So sometimes our minds can be a battleground. A war can be going on in our minds. And the devil torments us in our minds, especially when you're by yourself. And all these thoughts that come to you, all these unresolved issues, you, you, you think about it. And that, that thing, that thought. And a lot of times it's sin. Even Paul said, he said, I see a law that's working in my members. I see a law that's working on the inside of me. And that's the law of sin. And it is bringing me into captivity. It's warring against my mind. You ever have a fight in your mind? In your mind, it's a fight going on. Do she love me? Is she faithful? Is he going to do what he say he going to do? Is he going to pay me back the money he owe me? I know she wants something. How do you know all of this? This is the things. These are fiery darts of the enemy. And see, if the devil can conquer us in our minds, our hearts will never believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Our hearts will never believe that God can do exactly what he say that he will do. So this battleground, this battlefield, these wars is going on in our mind and just through talking with people, I found out that so many people, they're still searching for answers on why did this happen to me? Why did that happen to me? Well, the Lord knows and they want closure and that's understandable. And because there has not been any closure yet, because they have not been able to wrap their brains around why me, why all this pain? Why all of this confusion in my life? Lord, if you're who you say you are, did you not see it when it happened? Yes, he saw it, but he is not the author of the confusion. The Lord did not do it. The situation, the environment, the Lord did not create that. He is the deliverer to deliver us out of those situations. He said, I will bind up the broken heart. And people in general in this world, there's so many broken hearts. It's so much hurt. It's so much church hurt. It's so much hurt from the home life. Financial disaster is so much hurt. And all of this where there is no closure, people, they think about it and they think about it. And maybe, maybe or maybe not, rightfully so. But nevertheless, what good does it do to wallow in that? But we take our hurt. We take our pain, we take our situations, we take our lack of knowledge, our lack of understanding. We take all of this that's got us at a standstill in our lives that our prayers are not being answered. And because our prayers are not being answered, doubt is creeping in. And now not only are you saying, God, can you? You're saying, I don't think you can. But you got to turn that around. You see, if you can believe that God can't, you can surely believe that he can. Your doubt is faith in reverse. Turn it around and say, God, you can. And I know that you can. And I am coming to you just as I am. See, it's not scripture, but it's a good old saying, come as you are. Not how your clothes are. Now, you do need to put some clothes on. You need to come nowhere half naked. Get some clothes on. Come to the Lord and say, Lord, I come as I am. 
I drink a little bit. I drink a lot. Just tell it like it is. I'm an alcoholic, Lord. So we've all been in certain places in our lives, so we want to put some sugar on it. But we should not do that. We come to the Lord, and we're, we're honest. We're transparent. I heard one person say, come to the Lord with your soul butt naked before the Lord. Not your body, but your soul. Because he can see it anyway. He sees the sin anyway. And we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I got all my luggage with me. You look back there, you see all them bags. You may feel like the bag lady <laughs> or the bag man. Because a lot of us, we got some baggage, don't we? Oh, absolutely. We got luggage with us. We got luggage that we should have parked back in the 1970s. We got some bags with us we should have left back in 1980, 1990. 2000, 2021, we're carrying the bags, the baggage, the weight, the heaviness, the broken hearts of things when we were little bitty kids because we have not wrapped our brains around it and said, I, right, the only way I'm going to get through this hurt is I got to bring it to Jesus because when your soul is hurt, when your heart is broke, can nobody fix a broken heart but Jesus Christ. Can nobody repair damage that's been done but Jesus. He can unscramble them eggs. And if those eggs don't need to be unscrambled, he'll give you a new dozen of eggs. He know how to do it. Why? Because he loves us. Because we cannot live on day-to-day -day basis dragging these bags around with us. Our prayers will never get answered. And we go to the Lord, Matthew 5, 5th chapter, <clears throat> I think it's somewhere around the 23rd verse. The Bible said that when we go to the altar, we take our gift. The gift of God is the spirit of God. We say, Lord, I receive you. I believe you. I don't really altogether know everything about you, but what I do believe, I believe what I believe. And I come to this altar and your altar is wherever it is. Wherever it may be in the shower, it may be under your covers in your bed, it may be in the corner somewhere, it may be somewhere looking out the window, it may just be walking in your mind, go in a state of solitude, and you meditate and think about the Lord. But wherever your altar is, you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I come boldly to the throne of grace. And I pray that I find grace to help. Mercy in my time of need because I have so much stuff going on in my world. I can't think straight. I can't even sleep right. Lord, it's got my stomach in knots. I don't even know if I got ulcers or not. Sometimes it feels like it. I am weary. I am tired. Most of the time I feel worn. But Lord, I know that you can help me because can't nobody help me but you, Jesus. Matter of fact, I don't even want to bother nobody else with what I'm going through. And you bring it to the altar. Then the Bible says if you get to the altar and you realize that you're mad at your brother, that your brother's mad at you, you realize that you got some stuff you ain't worked out with well, maybe that girl over there that somebody done looked at wrong. Maybe that person over there that you done rock your head, suck your teeth. You done did something very distasteful. You didn't have the Beatitudes that the Bible tell us about over in Matthew. Then you get yourself up and you go over there and you work that thing out. I'm sorry that I said what I said, when I said what I said, and how I said what I said. Now, I didn't mean what I said, but I didn't mean it like that. I did not mean to hurt you. You work that out. So when you come to the Lord, he's not looking at our sins our unrepentant sins, but he's looking at us because we come into him in all sincerity because we want him to fix our life. See, ain't nobody on TV going to fix your life. Social media is going to damage and destroy your life. But Jesus Christ, he said, I come to save your life. He said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. And the Lord wants us to have a good life. He does not want us to live every day our minds toe up because when your mind cannot comprehend that God, the God of heaven, that created everything that there is, and in the beginning that he spoke it, and there it was. And Hebrews 11, uh, in the very first verse, it tells us, now, now faith. That's what we need, the right now faith. See, yesterday's gone. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow, it may never be ours, but right now, where we live in real time, right now, where the problem is, right now, where we can't get past the past, right now, where we can't go forward, right now, that we cannot believe that the Lord can do what he says he's going to do, now faith. 
Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And you know, there's a thing as, as um, blind faith. And, and then there's a thing as mind faith. You, you believe in your mind and, and the Lord don't want your faith, your belief to be in your mind. I just said early, how often do we change our mind? So it's our mind set. It's a pattern. And, and within our mind, our consciousness, you know, when you, you want to be conscious when you, you talk to the Lord. You don't want your, your consciousness to be altered by any substance, by any people. You don't want it to be influenced by people in your ear, but you, your consciousness, you want to go to the Lord with your eyes wide open, with your heart wide open, ready to receive eager and hungering and thirsting after righteousness because you know that the Lord, he wants to fix your life, but you got to bring it to him. You got to come to him and you come to the Lord. You say, Lord, I know that you can do this. And you come and the Lord and he see your, your sincerity and he see your heart and he tell you that what you need to do. Let's go to the scripture real quick. Let's turn over to uh, Isaiah because our minds and you know, I found out that a lot of people walk around with their eyes wide shut in this life and we cannot do that. But the, the, that's Isaiah 59 and we'll start the first verse. But in this life, uh, the mind, you know, the consciousness of the mind, we want to come to Christ, receive him and be fully aware of what we get it into. We have counted the cost and we know that Jesus Christ, our Lord and our savior, that if we're going to confess Christ and be a Christian, we got to live a God like life, a Christian life, a life of ethics and good morals, a life according to the Bible, the Lord, I want the mind of Christ because my own individual mind, it torments me. It keeps me up at night. Lord, renew my mind. Our mind has to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How can your mind get renewed? You re it's what you put in your mind. It's make better use of your eyes. Don't read everything that's ungodly. Don't read anything that's ungodly. Make better use of your eyes and get off of social media. Those people out there living in a false world, that's not reality. You know they got filters on. You know they don't look that good. You know that ain't they real stuff or real hair, real clothes. You know that. So let's deal with reality. The reality is what's going on in our life. Let's ask the Lord to work on our life. But listen at this, Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Go back and read the whole chapter. Listen at this. And another thing that I want to tell you about uh, is that when we go to the Lord, the Bible talks about repetitious prayers. When we go to the Lord, we said, oh, oh God, don't forget about my mama at the house. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, Lord, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we pray the same prayer. Don't forget about my, my little baby girl, my little baby boy. Lord, you know I ain't got no money. I need money, 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 money. Oh, Lord, I need this, 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 that, that, that. We, we're saying the same thing over it. And you know why we pray repetitious prayers? Because we don't believe that the Lord can answer them. So if you have prayed five prayers over one thing, which one of those five prayers do you want the Lord to answer? If it's about the same thing, Lord, my baby, 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 help my baby. So out of all those prayers, which one do you want him to answer? They're the same thing. So if you're praying the same thing over and over, did you believe that he could do it the first time? Second third, fourth, fifth time. Which one of those times did you believe that he could do it? Let's just say if somebody came to you with a real serious concern and asked you to help them and you could help them, do you need them telling you about it five different times or is one time sufficient? I think one time is sufficient. And the thing of it is we think that God didn't hear us. We think he's deaf. We think that he's ignoring us like we ignore him often. And then we go to him when we're, we say we really, really need him, but we really do need him every day. So the Lord, he really heard us the very first time. The thing of it is you didn't believe it when you prayed it because you have outside filters like those filters that they use on social media to make them look so beautiful. You see them in real life. You say, oh, they got pimples just like I do. They got receding hairline just like my brother. They got problems just like I do. They're not perfect people. So let's get the filters off of God. Let's get the filters out of our life and let's be real about it. I mean, let's keep it real 100% real. Let's be honest. 
Let's go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm a liar. And I need you to help me with this lie. Matter of fact, take it out of me. Take the taste of liquor out of my mouth because Jesus, if not, somehow I'll find my way back to it every time or whatever the sin is. So we go to the Lord and we ask him one time is enough. He's not death. And in that one time of asking, we believe it. Because we poured out our heart. We didn't tell him no lie. We didn't try to pull a slicky boy move on him. We didn't try to con the Lord, bamboozle him. But we came honest and straight up and real as real can be. Straight as an arrow, we came to the Lord. And he said, okay, they're honest, they're real, they're they sincere. And they asked me, and they believe it. And when you get up off your knees, you walk away believing that he is going to do what you ask him to do because you didn't ask him for no wrong. And not only do you get up believing, but you get up in expectancy. I'm expecting it to happen. Now, it is not your job to, Lord, when he's going to do it, when he do it. And when he do it, it's done. But won't he do it? Can't get amen. Somebody give me a north and south. Jesus will do just what we ask him to do if we're real. If we don't come to him with no lies. If we don't come to him with nothing, no unfairness. So listen to this. And I want to read this. And unfortunately, we always kind of run out of time. That's why I give you this scripture. Go back and read the whole book of Isaiah. I, listen to what Isaiah said. Now, let me tell you this. Isaiah was a prophet. Now, that mind faith, because you, you're going to change your mind a lot. People are going to persuade you. There's peer pressure. And then you read something and somebody said this. Stop reading all them somethings and put your face in this book right here. Read these scriptures. Read the Bible. So Isaiah, he, he didn't have mind faith. He had blind faith. All the other prophets, they had faith because to speak the word of God, you got to believe in who you're speaking. You got to be sold out to sell him. So he was sold out on Jesus Christ. But Isaiah, a young prophet, oh, he did what the other prophets didn't do. Not one of the prophets from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, not one but Isaiah jumped out there and said, a virgin shall conceive. And he said it and he meant it and he represented it and he did not take it back. And he stood on that word. Then you jump out there and say, a virgin's going to have a baby. You better have heaven backing you up. Because you know that is impossible. But the God that I'm telling you about, Jesus Christ is his name. He operates in the impossible realm. Things you can't do. Because if you could, you would have done it already. Things mama can't do for you. Things the law can't do for you. Things the government can't do. Jesus Christ can do it. You know why? Because the government is on his shoulder. And he got the power. He got the power. All power, heaven and earth, was given unto him. Isaiah said, listen, he said, the Lord's hand is not short. His hand ain't short. It's not. He can reach all the way from heaven, reach way down and pick you up. He can reach way down. He ain't even got to leave heaven. He ain't even got to go nowhere. He can send his word like he did, said, let there be light, and there will be light in your life. He can send the word ahead. Uh, Isaiah sent the word from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 400 years between it. Isaiah sent the word and said, a virgin shall bring forth a child and his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us because Jesus had not been born or else he would have said Jesus. But he said, Emmanuel. God with us. He sent that word. That's blind faith. When you jump out there, you say, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, whose hand is you going to use to bring it about. But I believe what I believe. And I believe, Jesus, that you can fix my life. And here I am. Blind faith. Jump out there. Believe God. Get that, that war in your mind. Forget your mind. But if your mind ain't straight, you ain't gonna believe God, but this word to get our minds straight. He said, God's hand is not short, that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Second verse, but iniquity have separated between you and your God. Therein lies the problem. Iniquity. What iniquity? Immoral thing. Things that you know that ain't right. You look at your neighbor and roll your eyes. Well, I didn't touch it, but you roll your eyes. It's immoral. It's wrong. It's not right. And injustice in all parts of life. Iniquity. But listen to this. Yeah, I'm reading fast because we're about to run out of time. And your sins have hid his face from you. And you're not here. So when you go to the Lord, make sure you ain't got no sin. You're like, what's sin? Well, let's think of one. Stealing. 
fornication, adultery, thou shalt not kill. You've got to repent. You got to repent. You cannot have a wife and a girlfriend. Matter of fact, unmarried people, that's fornication. You know what they're doing. So you got to stop that. You can't go to the Lord. You can't circumvent the scripture. You're not going to circumvent the Lord. So let's allow the Lord to work on our mind. So that's the whole book of the 59th chapter of Isaiah. And go over um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. So how the God of this world had blinded the minds. So I pray that the Lord have appealed to your heart, have pricked your heart, and that the words went in through your ears and went out through your mind, resonated there and found a home in your heart. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your word have found a home. Lord, these old leaky buckets we got, we see too much, hear too much, we talk too much, Lord, we smell too much. Seal up these leaks in our buckets, Jesus, that our minds will be sound mind, renewed mind in the Holy Ghost, Lord, that we can get our prayers answered and get our lives fixed in you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this word today. Bless all of the listeners out there, all of the hearers, in Jesus' name, be blessed.